Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here, nice to have you back. We're looking at uh, part two of a two-part series on Exchange Server 2007 Service Pack 1. Specifically, we're looking at the dial tone recovery process and we're going to uh, look at how to create the recovery storage group, restore the database to that recovery storage group, and then swap out the dial tone database and then merge those together. Be sure to check out all my videos up on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. And for high quality downloads, be sure to check out www.itvideocoach.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of this two-part series on how to take advantage of a dial tone recovery. All right, so we just finished off in part one by dismounting this database. And then we took the uh, database file and we moved the database file into a backup folder here. And then we took the log files and also copied them into this folder just so we have a safety net in case our tape backup's no good or whatever the situation is. And we can maybe try to work with these files to try to recover whatever we have. Okay, now with everything moved, what we want to do is now mount the database. Okay, it's right here at this point where we create the dial tone database. So we're going to mount the database and it comes up with a prompt. At least one of the store's database files is missing. Mounting this store will force the creation of an empty, of an empty database. Do not take this action if you intend to restore an earlier backup. Are you sure you want to continue? Okay, right there and then, once this guy is mounted, we now have a dial tone database. Okay, so all the user's mailboxes, when they go to connect, all their mail is going to be gone. So at this point right here, you know, we might want to log in, you know, as some kind of administrator and just send out a warning message to everybody. You now I'm logged in as Lucy, but, you know, whoever I'm logged in as, I probably want to create a brand new message and just send it to, you know, everybody out here. And we'll just send a message to everybody on the list here. Okay, so everybody's been informed that we now have this brand new database that has, you know, nothing in it. Okay, okay. when I log in as the user, I'm going to see that the uh, mailbox on the server uh, is available to the user. Okay, but it's, it's empty because it's in this database that we mounted that has nothing in it yet. So you have two choices as a user, either use your old data and work offline or connect to the server so you can send and receive mail, uh, but you're not going to see anything in your mailbox, okay? So we're going to go ahead and connect and use that temporary mailbox. And here's the message that we sent out that says, hey, don't freak out. All your mail is gone, but it should be back. Uh, the backup of your mail is being restored now as we speak. So you've got to send some kind of message to let people know what's going on so they don't totally freak out on you. So that would be very important, okay? So that just shows you that we're connected to that dial tone database. All right? Okay, now let's simulate some work that's going on. So let's log back in as Lisa. And this is a time frame while the uh, database is being restored. So there's going to be a window of time here while users are going to be taking advantage of the dial tone database as you're working very diligently in the background to uh, restore your database from tape. Okay, we're going to uh, connect as Lisa, same deal. Okay, nothing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are logged in as Lisa and we're going to send some brand new messages out to Lucy. We'll send two messages. So this is that in the meantime, okay? We're working with the dial tone database right now and we'll log back in as Lucy to make sure she got those messages, okay? And then what we need to do is then recover the database that we backed up before. Let's just log in as Lucy and make sure she got those messages from Lisa. And we can see that she got those messages there. Okay, so the users can work with this dial tone copy without a problem. So let's close that out. The next step that we need to perform is to restore the database. Okay, but before we restore the database, we have to create a recovery storage group. 
So this is where the database recovery management comes into play. We go into database recovery management, dial tone recovery. Okay, at this point we're going to create a recovery storage group for storage group 4. And it's going to create a subfolder that we can see here. And we'll create the recovery storage group. The recovery storage group was created successfully. Now the key point right here is that the recovery storage group has been created, but it is not mounted. So we'll just minimize this right here at this point. We're going to go into NT Backup. And we're going to restore the database. If we pick the right backup, here's the storage group 4 backup. And we're going to start the restore. So the key thing right here, which is very important, when you go to use the recovery storage group is that the the two databases are in place. The original storage group 4 and then the dial tone uh, group that was created. They're linked to each other. When I go to perform the restore, it's going to see that the original group is mounted and that the target group, the recovery storage group, is not mounted. It's not going to be able to recover or to restore into the live up and mounted database, so it's going to write it into the recovery storage group. Now, if I were doing this from the PowerShell uh, commandlet, I would have to make sure that the recovery storage group is marked to be overwritten so I can perform this process. Okay. Now, also very important, we have to create a temporary folder. We'll call it temp stg4. And we have to enable the replaying of the log files. So these two steps must be met when you're doing the restore, which is part of the specific update that was done for NT Backup to support the storage group restore, of course. Okay. So click OK on that. Okay, there's the restore of our backup that we just made not too long ago. And it's written that to the recovery storage group. So now we go back into the task center here. And we have our storage group. And we're ready to mount that storage group. Database 4. And we're going to mount that database. And the database mount was successful. We'll go back to the task center. And this is where it gets really interesting right here. This is a very cool feature. Whoever came up with this at Microsoft, God bless you. This is, this is awesome. We're going to take the databases and we're going to swap them. This is a swap of databases for a dial tone scenario. We're going to swap them out. We're going to gather the swap information. And it gives us some summary about what's going on here. And we're going to swap it out, perform the swap action. So now the database that we restored is now the live database. And the database that was the dial tone is now down in the recovery storage group. So the last step here to get all this mail combined together is we're going to take the restore, which is now the live, and the dial tone, which is now the restore. And we're going to take the dial tone data, the mail that was sent while we were waiting for the database to be restored and we're going to merge all that mailbox contents back up into the now live database. And since the only users that were using their mailboxes during that time frame were Lucy and Lisa, it only has to flag those mailboxes and merge those up. If there was other activity with thousands of users, of course, those would all be listed here. So we're going to perform the merge actions. Isn't this awesome? This is a great, great feature. Of course, we do recommend that you use an LCR or a CCR configuration. And that data has been merged. Now the last step here before we actually go look at the mailboxes and prove that this was successful, it's very, very important that you remove the recovery storage group. Okay? So we're going to dismount that recovery storage group. And you can see the name here. We know it's the recovery storage group. We're going to dismount it. And then we're going to remove it. Because remember, we can only have five databases total and we want to make sure that we leave that guy freed up for future recoveries. So as soon as you're done, make sure you clean up after yourself. Okay? All right, so that process is done. Now all we got to do is just log off and log in as Lucy. She can connect back to her mailbox and we should see a combination of her old messages Right? This is what was sent during the dial tone recovery period. And this is what was sent before the database became corrupted. So we've taken and merged those two together. Isn't that awesome?
okay? And uh, future changes on this database could be a little bit trickier because when we do the swapping, some names change behind the scenes that you may not have noticed. Let's go take a look at our database real quick. And if we take a close look at storage group four, notice how the name of that has changed. If we do a refresh on it, the name stays the same. So just understand that you, you are now using this other folder that was created by the recovery storage group. So your paths have changed, okay? So just something to keep in mind. Uh, you might notice that after the fact, say, hmm, that's kind of strange, or maybe you didn't realize that it changed the path. Anyway, that's the end of that. Thank you very much. That's the end of part two of this two-part series on how to use or take advantage of a dial tone recovery. We'll see you in the next video.